Welcome to Chess Dog, where players come to improve at the game of chess. My name is John Montgomery, and I want to begin with a, a thank you. I'm celebrating 100 subscribers to this channel. I know in a world where chess channels have over a million subscribers, that may not seem like much, and I understand that. But for me, it's uh, an important achievement, and I appreciate your support and uh, your continued support for this channel. Uh, today, I want to introduce uh, Grandmaster Anna Muzichuk, who is currently the seventh highest rated woman in the world. And when you see a picture of her, she may look like a sweet person, and by all accounts, in normal interaction, she, she is. But on the chessboard, she can be very mean and very cruel. She is not someone you want to play around with. And in this game, she shows us how to handle an opponent who likes to mess around on the flanks and doesn't really attack the center from the beginning of the game. Her opponent is Paulo Ladron de Guevara Pinto, who is a Spanish international master, rated 2445. This was in 2020. And Anna Muzichuk was rated 25-39 at the beginning of this game. And she has the white pieces, and she begins with e4. Her opponent plays g6, the modern defense. Now, this is a very ambitious line. Black wants to delay castling and let going to let white have the center and move some pawns on the flanks and wants to attack white's central structure after it has been established. But there's a lot of risk to this. And when you're playing a grandmaster, playing in this way is usually not uh, advised. Um, grandmasters have a tendency to really crush these kinds of openings. d4, Anna plays. Bishop g7, knight c3, d6, f4. So grandmaster Mazichuk is playing the most aggressive line possible. This is called the Austrian attack where you build up those three pawns. Black says you can have the center. White says, okay, well, I'm going to take it. And she takes it. And usually the attack is advanced with either the E5, the E4 pawn moving to E5 or the F4 pawn moving to F5. Black plays A6. Black wants to expand on the queen side before really developing the pieces. Knight F3, natural development. B5, expanding. Black wants to play b4 and hit that knight on c3, kick it away, and develop the bishop to b7. Anna plays bishop to d3, defending the e4 pawn and posting the bishop aggressively. Knight to d7. Black doesn't want to play the knight to c6 because he, don't, she, he doesn't want to block that c pawn. He wants to advance that c pawn and play the bishop to b7, doesn't want the knight in the way there. Grandmaster Mazichik plays a4, trying to create a weakness on the b5 square. Black plays b4, kicking the knight away. Knight e2. Now the knight defends d4, but also is able to shift over to the king side, and that's going to be a real issue as the game progresses. Black plays c5. Again, black is not developing pieces so much, and is at least two moves away from castling in this position. White solidifies the center by playing c3. Now white already has an advantage here. Uh, white does have to play accurately, though, but white already has an edge. A nice space advantage, some good development, and a fairly easy play. Black would normally want to play the knight to f6, like so, but if, if he does that now, e5 comes in, hitting that knight. So the knight is developed to h6 instead. White castle short, black castle short. And Anna says, well, now's the time for a central break. I have good development, and I'm ready to attack. So she plays f5, opening up that bishop at c1 and expanding the potential for the rook at f1. Also, the f4 square could become a pivot point for pieces. gf5, ef5. Black plays the other knight to f6 because they sense they're going to need an extra piece to defend that king in their right. Knight goes to g3. By the way, if you're getting value from this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Chess Dog if you're not already. Black takes in the center, cd4, cd4, then king to h8. Now, this is already a sign that things have not gone very well for Black. Black uh, wants to get the king to safety, but also wants to open up the g8 square. Maybe a rook can get there and they can attack along, attack along the g-file, but more likely they're going to have to move one of those knights back to the g8 square 
in a defensive posture. White plays a5, a very instructive moment. Before this move is played, black would like to play the queen to b6, which attacks down that b6 g1 diagonal, hits the d4 pawn, aims at the king, or move the queen to a5 so the queen can defend laterally along the rank. By playing a5, Anna Muzichuk stops both moves. Now neither move can be played. Black plays the bishop to b7. White plays bishop to d2, aiming at that b4 pawn. Now, black is, is worse here. So black, seeing the writing on the wall, sort of lashes out. Tries to open up the center in an attempt to complicate things. But when your development is lagging, opening up the center usually is going to lead to trouble. And that's what happens here. Black plays e5. Anna play, plays fe6, takes that e pawn en passant with the f pawn. Fe6, queen to e2. The queen hits the e6 pawn, threatening to capture it, and also controls, adds to control of the e4 square, which is important. Black play, plays knight f to g4, beginning some of the trickery. What black wants to do here is play bishop takes knight on f3, and then when white recaptures, the g7 bishop can capture on d4 with check. The queen maybe can come to h4 and cause some trouble. But uh, Anna Mazichuk is not having it. She just plays bishop e4 and neutralizes that long diagonal and ends the light squared bishop's hope of taking on f3. Bishop d5, bishop d5, e d5. And uh, Mazichuk plays the queen right into the heart of black's position. Queen to e6, hits the pawn at d5. Black plays rook to b8, which defends the pawn at b4. Rook A to E1, centralizing the pieces and preparing for the final phase of the attack. Black plays the knight back to F6, and white sees that that F5 square would be a great place to put a knight. It could cause all kinds of trouble for black's position. So the grandmaster takes on H6 with the bishop, and after bishop H6, then plays the knight in to F5. White's threatening to just take that bishop at H6. The bishop moves back to g7. Then white plays knight to g5. And look at that. White has brought every single soldier to the battle. Both rooks, both knights, the queen, all aggressively posted, ready to deliver the coup de grace. At the moment, white's threatening knight to f7 check, and black would have to give up an exchange, and that would be just the beginning of black's troubles. So black plays queen to e8 in an attempt to control the f7 square and prevent that check, that fork. But that is a blunder. Can you see the sequence of moves that leads to a win for white in this position? That's right. Knight takes g7. Black cannot take the queen because then the knight at g7 would recapture it and uh, white would just be up a piece. So black plays king g7, and then the final move of the game, rook takes f6, and here black resigned because there's no way to recover that piece. If black plays rook takes f6, white would just play queen e8, winning a whole piece. And if instead black played queen e6, then rook f takes e6, and white is up a piece with a totally winning end game. Uh, a terrific game and a terrific lesson from a very strong player, Anna Muzichuk, about how you handle positions where your opponent sort of dances around on the flanks. She goes, she went right through the center of the board and then attacked the king. A great lesson from Anna Muzichuk. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.